In this video, we're delving once again into the meanings of the tarot cards in Cyberpunk 2077. Hallucinations of graffiti that only we can see around Night City, which hold unnervingly accurate foresight. Specifically, we're covering the four minor Arcana additions to Phantom Liberty, following up my first video on those from the base game, piecing together how each forewarns us of one of the four different endings, and the insights they provide into some of the characters. So let's get to it. Starting off with the first card found at the beginning of our Phantom Liberty journey, the King of Cups is located on a wall just outside the Dogtown main gate, around the corner from where we first meet Somi's engram, and she silences Johnny Silverhand. Indeed, everything with this card screams warnings about her character, describing the King of Cups as, quote, a creative and emotionally driven person. They are a strong individual who realizes the importance of feelings. Intuition helps them navigate their lives. When fate falls in their favour, compassion guides their actions. When they're at odds with fate, it can be unwise to trust them." End quote. Now, as we'll learn later in the story, Somi is, beneath the surface, entirely governed by her emotions, clinging on to a near unbreakable will to survive, or failing that to be free. Throughout Phantom Liberty, she plays on the emotions of Reed, Hansen, and most of all, us, establishing a common ground through the fact that we're both dying, despite knowing the entire time that her clever the plots will only work for one of us, orchestrating the Space Force One crash and events thereafter entirely in aid of her own self-interests. Now, wider reading on this card in real life gives two base meanings. When the card is upright, it represents a compassionate, loyal individual, but when reversed, describes more an emotionally manipulative and aggressively impulsive person. Both very much sides we see to Songbird, the surface level compassion we first see, which makes way for the reverse when the turn tables, that uh, tables turn. Thus, its placement right here, before we even enter Dogtown, can be taken as an immediate warning that there's a darker side to this apparent saviour. At the end of the Tomorrow Never Knows tarot quest, having found all four new pieces of graffiti, we can take our findings to Misty, getting her take on each of the cards. And here's what she has to add about cups. I saw this figure sitting there with, mm, don't know, a goblet maybe? Ah, the King of Cups. Oh, be especially careful with anyone you've met who this card might be pointing to. Well, gotta be careful with everyone I meet these days. On one hand, the King of Cups signifies understanding, emotional balance. On the other, he's the opposite. Manipulation and spiritual crisis. And V, hun, the last thing your spirit needs is even more chaos and disappointment. So again, basically the same warning, hammering home that the cards are indeed foreshadowing devices, and these new four are a lot more on the nose than those from the base game, which I made a video on several months ago. Though from then to now, the same question still stands. How the hell does some hallucinated graffiti hold such extraordinary insight into the literal future? And well, I do have a working theory that relates to some other things in game, but we'll discuss it in a bit, after looking at all four of the cards. The last point to be made on King of Cups, though, relates to the ending and achievements of the same name. Obtained via betraying Songbird, pursuing her into Sinusure facility, surviving this terrifying thing, and then at the final moments to prevent Somi from getting recaptured into a life of servitude, fulfilling her request of death. Like I said, she wants to survive and be free, but failing that would rather secure freedom through dying. I find it interesting that the card directly relating to her character then would correspond with this particular ending. Is it to say that this is the best possible conclusion for her? Better than getting exactly what she wants and escaping to the moon? It's the same deal with Reed's card in fact, the King of Wands, but we'll come back to that. However, what I find interesting is that these two endings aren't swapped in their names. Surely it would make more sense for the ending where Songbird appears to achieve actual freedom to be named after her her cards. Now, the morbid answer to this is of course that no such freedom does await her on the moon, and I guess Mr. Blue Eyes could plan to rewire her brain into subservience to instead become his weapon, not the NUSA's. And perhaps the only true way out for this emotionally driven character is to be fully removed from the world. Then again, it could just be a commentary on what she realistically deserves for betraying everyone. Freedom? Yes. Life? Nah. But perhaps that's an even more morbid conclusion to come to. Either way, the card is definitely an 
initial warning, Tosomi's hidden impulsivity. The next cut, or graffiti, is found right outside the elevated hovel that we're fortunate enough to call a home in Dogtown, where we head with Rosalind Myers after escaping the tunnels. By the way, if you're a fan of this art style, then stick around at the end of the video to see these and some other awesome cyberpunk arts that you can get via Displate. Anyway, where cups pointed entirely to Somi then, Pentacles is, without much doubt, representative of Rosalind Myers, described as, quote, The King of Pentacles is is imperious. They represent enterprise, pragmatism, but also attachment. From such a person, one can expect coldness, or attachment to material possessions. They are likely to turn your world upside down sooner or later." End quote. If its location, being closely tied to the president wasn't enough of a clue then, the pragmatism and coldness description encompasses her more than anyone else does, for definite. With the entire nation of the new United States riding on her shoulders, it's Maya duty to eternally maintain a cool composure. Even when Space Force One is going down, Somi tells us this. I laid out the details of our plan. Typical Rosalind. Keep me apprised, she says calmly. Just sitting there, sipping her gin, looking through her agenda, postponing meets. Woman's unshakable. Again, Myers exemplifies both elements of the upright and reversed version of this card, though admittedly leans more into the upright description, I think. An ambitious and successful leader through whom many can seek safety and security, but on the flip side, she does have a cold streak and obsession with power above all else. A darker side only seen really in the spaceport ending path, wherein Myers invades the place despite knowing hundreds of innocents will get caught in the crossfire, causing a massacre simply to try and regain Song and strengthen her own power a little more. Now, Misty's insights do add a bit more to this one, I think. So I saw a hooded figure, Star War pentagram behind him. Devil stealing's your area of expertise too. Mm, the King of Pentacles, having dealings of your own with one who's built a rich, powerful realm through sheer determination. Someone like that, dangerous V world looks different from atop a throne. Your reign is constantly under threat. <sighs> Rather deal with satanic shit, honestly. Saying I gotta be on my guard? I'm not sure simple caution's enough. Bad fate's stronger than that. But follow your heart, I always say. Even in defeat, you'll remain true to yourself. So this then expands on Maya's motivations for all of the actions we'd regard as evil. She's become so powerful that the only thing she's afraid of is losing her power. Often looking down on so many underlings attempting to usurp her, and no doubt her close brush with death at the start of the expansion, merely strengthens this constant fear. Misty telling us to follow our heart and remain true to ourself, I think then relates directly to the King of Pentacles ending, which unlike King of Cups, leaves absolutely no doubt. This is the best ending for Rosalind Myers. She gets back her invaluable black wall assets with absolutely zero collateral damage and is so pleased with us that we even get a medal and more importantly access to the tower ending if we so choose. I said in my endings ranked video that this is the best one for us as players to get rewards and experience content and I stand by that. Turns out dealing with the all-powerful king of pentacles will net you a ton of riches as the card describes. Fitting also that Myers should reward us with the physical gift of a medal in accordance with her perception of value. In this case, our world may not have been turned upside down by her, but it ain't exactly a happy ending for everyone else. Somi returns to the life she so desperately strove to escape, Alex just straight up dies, and Reed, though he may not see it, keeps on in blind servitude to the NUSA. I believe that this card is ultimately warning us here of all places directly before our most intimate discussion with Rosalind that this woman doesn't care about us, seeing us as no more than an asset to be simply used when our interests align. Go against this powerful individual though, and she will destroy us without hesitation to achieve her own goals. Now, V, when talking to Misty, attributes the pentacle to relate to dealing with the devil, and I think there's something in that too, in the fact that we get exactly what we want, but at significant and unforeseen cost. 
Our next card can be found further north in Dogtown, at the edge of the basketball court, the place we first encounter Solomon Reed, and in a couple of the endings, eventually return to for an eye-opening chat. This is the King of Wands, a card whose meaning, I think, has a little crossover with both cups and pentacles. In-game, its entry reads, quote, The master of planning and unorthodox ideas. An individual who brings people together and radiates inspiration to those they consider friends. However, their enemies will soon find they are an impulsive, devastating force of nature, capable of breaking oaths and crossing any line just to see their goals achieved." End quote. Like I say, there's some crossover. Once again, we have a leader, though less an icon of wealth and power, and more of an inspiring presence. Reed is without a doubt the heart of this operation, with strong ties to the rest of the characters. A complicated history with Somi, a blind loyalty to Myers, and an old friendship with Alex. The warning of impulsivity then relates to the reversed side of the card, leaning more into themes of dominance and a controlling nature. So both the upright and reversed King of Wands are the two sides of Solomon Reed, and a pattern is starting to emerge with these. When we first meet Reed and during the earlier missions, he's purely that inspiring authority. It's only towards the end of the expansion, especially if we betray him, that we then meet the devastating force of nature side. There's multiple occasions down this path where Reed will kill us with without a second thought, just as he did the Cassell twins. Speaking to Misty on this one, I think the parallels to how the story plays out are very, very clear. So there was this figure, seated, holding this thingamabob like a club or a scepter or something. The King of Wands? So that suggests you've met a leader who sticks to his principles in pursuing his aims, or even some grand vision. Okay, good or bad? Well, as ever, it depends on you. The King of Wands suggests fresh opportunities, the discarding of old patterns or habits. But it implies a certain danger, too, of ruthless action and shortcuts taken. And in the end, it could demand a sacrifice towards fulfillment of some great expectation. Now, Reed is indeed a man to put principle above all else. His goal of preserving Somi's life is entirely unwavering, and he is willing to go any lengths to see it achieved. So wrapped up in the idea that he can save her, that he doesn't stop for a moment to consider whether he should. As for the sacrifice to achieve fulfillment, well, perhaps that ties into the particular ending of the same name. Again, I find it strange that the one wherein Solomon Reed has to die shares this card's name. But just as we could argue that Somi has to die to be free, perhaps the same can be said for Reed. A guy who's completely shoehorned into remaining loyal to the NUSA, but also sticking to his own principles. He wants Somi to be okay, but is also duty-bound to return her to Myers. Though to fulfil both goals, he ironically has to leave Somi to a fate she describes as worse than death. And ultimately, achieving his very specific goal actually benefits neither of the two of them. No ending exists where both of them get what they want. Either Somi is recaptured, or one of them winds up dead. I suppose for King of Wands then, Reed does die, but perhaps that works out weirdly okay for what he wants. His principles remain intact, he doesn't have to live through failure like in King of Cups, and he actually achieves his goal of saving Somi, most likely, and properly, in a way that she actually wants. So what would Reed rather, death, or living to see his worldview utterly shattered? Then again, perhaps this is is simply the ending wherein Reed exemplifies the King of Wands archetype the strongest. Either way, its placement here is still a warning, saying yes, this guy can help us, but just be wary of how far he's willing to go in order to win his own game. For the final card then, you'll want to come down to Alex's Moth Bar and head around to the back entrance, where just next to the door is probably my favourite out of these four designs. Let me know yours in the comments. So, the entry for this one reads, quote, Two things matter above all else for a King of Swords, logic and conviction. They represent a person with a precise moral compass, who is known for their caring demeanour. However, enemies beware. The King of Swords is a ruthless opponent who will not rest until you are punished and left to be 
be torn apart by Hound's fate. End quote. Now, out of all the four, this one is the only card I can't definitively say relates to a certain character. But for the most part, I'm about, let's say, 80% certain that it's Alex. After all, she is the fourth big player in this spy thriller game who isn't straight up a villain like Colonel Hansen. And if we look at Alex, there are certainly similarities to be drawn with this description. On the whole, she has a fairly sound sense of morality, not tied to someone else's rules so much like Reed, and not manipulating everyone to suit her own ends like Somi. So why does she get into this game at all? Well, I think it's because she sees an opportunity to get out of the literal slum of Dogtown, a fair incentive with a healthy balance of self-interest. Upright, this card represents good morals and rationality, but reversed, it more has connotations of the opposite, somebody losing their cool and devolving into aggression. Which is where my slight uncertainty comes into play. Whilst the other three characters all represented two sides of a coin, Alex doesn't get much chance to show off her darker side. She does of course execute a raw cell, and whilst a violent action, I'd say that's still a calculated and logical move. The only time I can think really where she doesn't fully have it all together is here. <laughs> But I mean, even this, I don't think it's too much of an overreaction, so perhaps Misty's take can clear things up. So, saw a guy wielding a pair of swords. Mmm, you've met the king of swords. One of my personal favorites. Oh, something good? Well, the king of swords sees clearly and is a strong voice of reason. But when emotions run high, even reason can't always rise above the jazz. His truths are often sharp, painful to hear. Some would rather cover their ears, live a lie, if only to avoid suffering. Now, that does make a lot more sense, and perhaps in Alex's case, her reversed version of the card is less of an overt lack of cool, and perhaps more a hiding from the truth, or rather hiding the truth, quite literally. With her faceplate implant, Alex can look like anyone, and indeed it's her acting skills, born of her original dream to become a brain dance star, that landed her the role of FIA agent in the first place. Living a lie, avoiding the problem, is exactly what Alex has been doing before we meet her, and perhaps Perhaps in this case, the character development happens the other way around, with Alex growing into her best self across the course of the expansion. Though interestingly, the ending named King of Swords has very little to do with Alex at all. And it's only the King of Wands ending where we get one final meeting with her. A meeting where she explains being tasked to kill us, but due to the fact that we're already dying, opts to just wait it out until the job completes itself. Another example of Alex's sound common sense based morality. So she instead leaves Dogtown for a brighter future in Monte Carlo. A future I think it's safe to assume she also gets in the King of Swords ending, where she again survives but so does Reed, and we instead go and meet him. And despite our lack of contact with Alex in this one, it's probably the best outcome for her overall when you think about it. She doesn't lose a friend and has no worries whatsoever about kind of shirking her mission a little bit by not killing us, which again could be interpreted a little, in the way Misty put it, as living a lie to avoid more suffering. Instead here, she fully gets her ideal outcome to again support the idea that each tarot card and its related character ties directly to the best ending for that person. A nice idea if you're Alex or Myers, but less so if you're Somi or Reed. So bit of an outlier this one, but those would be my best guesses. As for what they all mean collectively, as well as why we're seeing them in the first place, well, let's take a look. A good place to start with this, I think, is the end of the Tomorrow Never Knows quest, straight up asking Misty for a literal meaning behind it all. Thanks. Great insights. Still not sure what to make of what I saw, though. Well, I think you're caught between strong personalities, boring ones even. They all want to influence you, though not all of them necessarily know it. Nothing new there. Don't dismiss it, V. You've got new possibilities to explore, new paths to tread. On the way to either your salvation or doom. The choice is still yours, though. You still shape your life, your fate. So what do I do? What's the right path? Just be true to yourself, V. Your heart will know the way. A life-changing event is likely imminent. Watch for it closely. 
So that seems to clear things up a lot. Each ending relates to doing what one of these people wants, and very importantly, Misty said that they may not even know it. Somi, at least by this point if we follow this path, does request death for King of Cups. Myers would like her back the easiest way possible, making pentacles exactly what she wants. Swords, though it involves going against Alex at first, does allow for her survival, unbeknownst to her. And perhaps Reed even, in the darker recesses of his mind, does quietly want it all to stop. Though that's definitely the darkest take of these. Ultimately then, the tarot cards are warning us about the choices to come, but subtly enough that we can only really see that after it's already happened. But then the big question still remains. Why are we getting imbued with knowledge of the future, and more importantly, how? Now, Victor reckons these graffiti hallucinations are caused by the biochip malfunctions. In which case, perhaps their locations and attributions to certain characters characters are the incredibly accurate insights of Johnny Silverhand. And the timeline would also back this up a bit, with King of Cups appearing just before we meet Somi, after which Johnny is temporarily silenced for a while. Then King of Pentacles doesn't appear when we first meet Myers, but rather a few minutes after Silverhand returns, having had some time to analyse and form an opinion of her. Then again, if we're looking at it that way, King of Cups does appear before we really meet Somi, only previously exchanged changing a very brief phone conversation. Are we really saying that Silverhand got all that insight from just a couple lines? I'm not so sure. But let's also consider the fact that Somi got inside our head via the relic too, perhaps even as early as the phone conversation. So maybe our subconscious picked up on her ulterior motives and projected it in the form of the card. And I mean, why cards at all? I asked the same question in the first video, and I'll repeat a theory I think actually has some weight. Now remember, the chip was also inside Jackie's head originally, and only got transferred mere moments before he died. We know that death is the chip's signal to get to work, but what if it went slightly both ways, and pieces of Jackie's subconscious bled into the chip as well? After all, what was the last thing Jackie said before removing it? Misty, I know. She always knew. It's abundantly evident, analysing this game, that Misty does have this bizarre, indirect foresight into events to come. And we know that Misty taught Jackie a lot about tarot, to which he listened and learned. Therefore, I believe maybe the tarot visions are a small, burned in effect of Jackie's subconscious. Final strong thoughts of Misty, and by extension tarot, reflected into our mind and cropping up around NC. Whether then triggered also by Silverhand's insights, or something else. I feel I feel like this theory almost works, but it doesn't explain how the cards are always so unfailingly accurate about the future. So here's what happens if we dismiss all of this. No. No way some mystical forces out there are running my life. Mystical forces don't really care if you believe. They do their thing, influence you all the same. Your fate, ultimately, is still in your hands, V. Be true to yourself, and all will be well. Now, this particular line I find to have an odd level of certainty. Could just be Misty's particular take. After all, there are plenty of big forces that do undeniably influence us. The weather, chemical balances, astronomical phenomena, and countless others. But that all said, there is one particular actual mystical force added in 2.0, described to be surveilling Night City from some realm beyond, that's apparently capable of the impossible. I'm talking, of course, about the conclusion to the FF06B5 mystery. Something I don't want to delve fully into again today, I've already got videos covering it and may do a big deep dive in the future. In brief though, the conclusion to that brings forth the idea that either a, the game is a simulation controlled by higher entities, and I don't mean simply that it's a video game made by CDPR, rather that the actual game world is a subsidiary to a higher plane of existence within the canon. It basically takes my fourth wall break tarot theory from the last video, that the graffiti is full on just a big warning from the devs themselves, and makes it instead a big warning from these higher mystical forces, or perhaps gods. Then again, this is a cyberpunk game, and it's much more fitting for the devs to take that concept and give it a unique cyber twist. Therefore, I would reckon, rather than mystical gods, it's possibly an AI, bleeding in through the technology in our head and granting insights in the form of tarot. How could it possibly predict the future though? Well, given the fact that it is seen to be surveilling everyone, 
in the city. Using all that data, it could probably draw up fairly accurate models as to what will happen next and the individual decisions every person will most likely make. Why would this AI help V though? Well, maybe we should consider that it's not even deliberate. Maybe V, like Gary the Prophet, is just tapped into signals they're not supposed to hear and then interprets them as metaphors. In the end, all I can say for certain is that these cards were a cool feature added by the devs as an additional activity with an incredible amount of thought put into the meanings. And perhaps even when writing these four characters, they could have used the two sides of each of these cards as inspiration. Either way, they each serve as a unique and creative method of foreshadowing or warning. Whatever their meanings though, I think we can agree that the designs all look awesome. And if you too are a fan, then let me bring your attention to Displate, who sell metal posters of all the tarot art from the base game, as well as a huge catalogue of other cyberpunk works. Personally, I'm also a huge fan of the new Phantom Liberty designs by Valeria, so check those out through my link down below, with which you'll also be directly supporting this channel. I rarely, if ever, promote products, but I genuinely love these designs, and really just wanted to give them a shout out. This is not a direct sponsorship. And with that, I just want to say thank you to the patrons, as always, for allowing me the freedom to ignore sponsorships for plenty of products I just don't use. Cheers for watching, I'm Sam Bram, see you in the next one.